So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about The House of the Idrisis, a novel I've translated. The novel is by Azale Alizadeh and I'm Rosa Jamali. So about me, I'm an Iranian poet based in Iran, based in Tehran. Um, I've studied English literature and um, I've studied English literature at Tehran University and I'm a PhD candidate of English literature and then I've published six collections of poetry so far and the first book I published uh, titled uh, This Dead Body is Not an Apple, It's Either a Cucumber or a Pear, which was published in 1997 and opened new landscapes according to critics of Persian poetry and some possibilities. And then um, the, 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 the points that um, critics mentioned on this book are broken syntax, wordplay, surreal word, and uh, the words which have lost their meanings and have become jumbled objects within contemporary everyday life. These are the lines of articles, scholarly articles mentioned by some prominent scholars of Persian poetry. And then I've adapted a kind of music from classical Persian poetry and imbued it with the natural cadences of speech juxtaposing long and short sentences uh, and in my recent poems I've created some layers of intertextuality with Persian mythology and mysticism uh, and then um, form matters so much for me and style and I've written lots of articles, scholarly articles on poetics of Persian poetry and different I've experienced different styles through different traditions uh, like uh, imagery and language based poetry and I've been inspired by some transcendentalists like Sohrevardi in creating an image, a kind of mystic image uh, again within uh, the, the everyday life like uh, the objects around us also because I've studied English literature and I've translated so many poets from English to Persian so actually I have also been inspired by English poetry and then I've got two anthologies of Anglophone poets translated into Persian two, two books, two volumes on uh, word poetry translated into Persian with some scholarly preface and then um, I've been um, invited to so many poetry first festivals worldwide and I've been a judge in a number of prestigious poetry prizes inside the country and I've written uh, so many articles on poetics and literary theory and the book which has selected my uh, articles called Revelations in the Wind which discusses the poetics of Persian poetry. I've also translated my own poetry into English, which has been published in a number of literary journals. My, uh, my poems have been translated to other languages, many different languages, and have been published in many anthologies worldwide. I've been invited to so many um, events like events in British Library, events in actually American universities uh, and other events on writing worldwide. And here is the preface of book I've prepared for the House of Idrisis. First about the author, Ghazale Alizadeh. Ghazale Alizadeh was born in Mashhad, the central city of northeastern province of Khorasan. 
historically important this place is really important because you can name so many writers and poets coming from this uh, province of Iran actually Khorasan the greater Khorasan was uh, in its own great mass area before actually um, before mentioning Iran at the time of Safavid. Khorasan is, a well, is well known for a number of prominent poets with an exclusive literary school which has been featured for its high range of archaic vocabulary, diction and poetic aspects. The tradition has left a great influence on Alizadeh's style of writing. Alizadeh studied law and politics at Tehran University and continued her education in illumination philosophy and mysticism at Paris Sorbonne. She became a prolific writer in the 70s, 80s and 90s. I'm talking about English calendar, not Iranian calendar. Quite an influential figure in Iranian Association of Writers. And about the book which we are talking about, House of Edrisis, the House of Edrisis. Her main work is best known for its rich and poetical language, surrealistic aspects, powerful characterization, na narrative techniques, wealth of descriptions and discourse analysis through different classes of society, quite a number of current slangs and colloquial expressions have been adopted through its dynamic dialogues. The, quotation have, the quotations have references to many other books like classical novels, philosophy, bible, world history, arts, music and so. One can see some layers of intertextuality with the poetry of Rumi and Hafez. The setting doesn't infer a certain time or place. It has seemingly taken place in Ashgabad, a city built on the ruins of Nisra, the capital cities of Ashkani dynasty. The novel depicts a group of learned people living with an old culture and literary treasury while they, uh, they are invaded by commoners and military people. The house is the metaphor of land taken by others. Through the narrative techniques implied by the writer, we get to know about the life of the generation past, people who lived in the house many years before, and how they are attached in a mysterious tangled network of relationships, some mystical and mythological aspects of codes and symbols could be a subject to study. The House of the Edrisis and uh, Alizadeh's portrait have been partly pictured in Daryush Mehrjoui's film Banu. Alizadeh committed suicide in 1996. Her body was found hanged on a tree in a green spot in northern Iran. Later the place was cited as the Temple of Anaita in ancient Persia. Her death was widely reflected in the 90s poetry among the elegies written on her death is Reza Barohani's elegy in which he describes her as the bride of Iran's literature. This is the preface to my book, actually to my translation, to the book I've actually translated. Uh, the House of Edrisis is a prominent post-revolutionary novel in Iran by Ghazali Alizadeh, a noted novelist translated from original per Persian to English by me, Rosa Jamali. If you want to contact me, these are the email addresses you can just uh, send an email to me. If you're a publisher or if you're a researcher, I would be happy to just offer some parts of the translated novel to you or if you're if you have a literary journal and you would like to publish one part of this book 
I have an email address, Gmail address, and an address which belongs to Tehran University. The one which I check more than others is my Gmail address. Thank you. And about the book, The House of Edwises, the original language is Persian, the translator to English, Rosa Jamali, number of pages in the original uh, Persian, actually the first time published, 757 pages in Persian, first publication, Tiraje, 1991, type of novel, dystopian river novel, novel, Roman flu. This is a French expression. Actually, river novel, a kind of novel in which you can see the characters develop, and you can see uh, that uh, the the first chapter. So, if you have five characters, then it, it develops to five hundred characters through through the novel, and the settings develop, and it's an allegory. The theme: the age of decline, abuse of political power, plot: a manor house is occupied by government militia and common people. The house ends up in con confiscation. Some die, some go to exile, and others put up with a new situation. Narrative style, chronological order, flashback, time not specified, setting not specified, Co Caucasus, Ashgabat, a team house, point of view, the intrusive, omniscient, third person narrator. And about the literary school is realist with traces of surrealism, symbolist with digressions to magic realism, some elements of gothic fiction are seen. Similar novels. The similar novels we can mention are George Eliot's Animal Farm, Marcel Proust in Search of Lost, Lost Time, Chekhov's Cherry Orchard, and Russian classics the language. The book's success is due to its polyphonic structure of juxtaposing highly prestigious literature of Khorasan and street talk used by commoners. Some layers of intertextuality with Persian classical poetry are seen. Synopsis Mrs. Edrisi lives with her grandson, Wahab, and daughter, Lega, in a selected mansion. A revolution has just happened in this country. A communist totalitarian government has taken over the properties. An armed group, which is called Firing Squad, occupy their place. Groups of people and strangers take refuge in the house. Some are recognized to be common people and others are called spies. Wahab, who is a very educated young man, is obsessed with the memory of his dead aunt Rahila. Among the people who enter the house is a young actress who reminds Wahab of his aunt. Wahab falls in love with her. Roxana, who is from Tbilisi, and uh, the previous lover of a noted poet called Yuri Marenko, becomes a key character to connect and a new time uh, and uh, connect all that new time and to connect people inside and outside the house. Soldiers of the new government are told to change the lifestyle of these people, to teach them about the revolutionary social values, and to ask them help the public who are much in need. Shokat, who is a revolutionary character, is, as is called by a comrade title, is supposed to teach them some proletarian values. She usually criticizes Vahab for being lazy and book form. She has a sarcastic way of talking and insults other others easily. 
Soldiers and comrades set new rules in the house and try to teach the residents the revolutionary goals. They are rough and despotic and they speak very harshly, command and yell at others. They break the valuable stuff and destroy whatever which looks ornamental through they might have a sentimental value for Mrs. Edrisi. It seems that the soldiers want to teach these aristocrats people a way of life to live in a team of comradeship deep inside you you feel that they have taken over the place to teach their harsh attitudes radical ideas and inhumane behavior they finally steal the valuable stuff in the house and destroy their decorum and propriety In season one, we see different groups of people in the house. At the end of this season, the house takes a different and new identity when all these different sorts of people mix. Even the residents of the house change their tone of speaking when they are among newcomers. In the second season, residents of the house get to know more about the firing center headquarters of the new government and they try to have a sort of interaction with them. Some like Haddadian turn to become an agent, very hypocrite and manipulative. Little by little fear grows among them and they would like to be in a sort of connection with them. Roxana turns out to be the spy of firing squad band and helps them loot the treasure in the house. The residents of the house leave and in a reversal of fortune, their lives change dramatically. In the third season, so many stories of marginal characters are told. We learn about Rana. Bahab's mother, who was once in touch with Roxana. Some other characters are created by the descriptions of the main characters. In the final season, the house is going to be confiscated. Bahab leaves, leaves for Kashmir. Lega becomes a piano teacher. And in the last chapters, we face to a sort of ruin in the place of the house. The author applies a sense of humor when different social classes mix and their thoughts and dreams are not understood well. The new residents of the house try to divide the rooms among themselves and at the end they send the household to a dormitory. They try to persuade them that the, this lazy lifestyle should be stopped for the sake of society. They are supposed to provide a fair and just life for all members of the society. This is for the cause of their communist revolution. There are so many marginal characters in the second boat. Their stories are told either by the travelers or a moment of me remembrance in the household. Characters all undergo a change and at the end of novel they're totally different people. The aristocrats turn to civil servants of the new government. Edrisi's family don't have a special inclination to a specified religion, but the, the way Lera worships a holy tapestry might be similar to Christians. The travelers from Moscow and Yalta speak about churches. No key point is available if they are Muslims. At the end of the novel, residents of the house find out that Yuri Marenko is dead. Some say it was because of a heart attack and some believe he committed suicide.
At the end of novel, we see how old revolutionary slogans have created a new tyranny and how their propaganda machine could take the self-esteem of people, characters like Obad, fought for freedom and equality, but at the end they created a new type of captivity and how their utopian image turned to a sort of dystopia. Lives of women have been described very well. Roxana is a is in a place which could make anyone green, uh, 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 anyone green with envy. But sometimes she wishes a kind of stable family life, which she could find a serenity in that. Women like Kokab are accustomed with their oppressed life. A husband who beats her. Mrs. Edrisi, who is an example of failure in love and is dutiful to social standards. Let's talk about characters, the main characters first. One, the residents of the house, Mrs. Edrisi, Zuleikha, the landlady, aristocrat, speaks a very decent person. She has been in love with Gobad, a revolutionary guard from the fire center. She marries, but still in love with him. Vahab, Mrs. Edrisi's grandson, immersed in books. Roxana, actress, Vahab's lover, born and bred in Tbilisi, very much like Nina in Chekhov's The Seagull, appears at the end of the at the end of book one. Lega, Mrs. Edrisi's elder daughter, peculiar and weird with strange habits. Yavar, the old servant, faithful. Again, main characters, Shokat, a revolutionary woman from Labour Party, uses a lot of slangs. She is rough and masculine, wears yellow. Haddadian, the hypocrite mayor, spy of new government. Borzu, university student. Rashid, factory worker. Kokan, tailor. Younes, poet. Rukhsare, laundry woman. The gate ca crashers. Among the gate crashers are COVID, a drama student. Actually, these people come to this house. Um, they want to take refuge, or actually, some of them um, have no place, and they uh, they they want a place in this house. Golroch, Shirin, Koka, Pari, and Turkan. The gate crashers again, Rashid, Adir Taimur, who is a gardener, and the guards of the new government mentioned as firing squad band. People from the past, actually these people um, are involved in the novel by the descriptions of others. Rahila, Mrs. Edrisi's daughter who died young of a strange fever and her memory has haunted the house. Mr. Edrisi, Mrs. Edrisi's late husband, opium addict. Robot, Mrs. Edrisi's previous lover joined the firing squad band. Yuri Marenko, well-known poet, Roxana's previous lover, much like Vladimir Mayakovsky. Rana, Vahab's mom, who has l left them. Fire Center Panel, Obad, Mrs. Edrisi's previous lover, joined the firing squad band and soldiers. Note on the title. The title implicitly refers to Prophet Idris and Shahab al-Din Sorwardi's Theosophy, who is the founder of Persian wisdom and illumination, illumination philosophy, and the follower of Prophet Idris. The title has 
also some uh, has also some significance in secret societies of mystics. Uh, remember, Sohrevardi is uh, actually a character, a figure, in actually um, uh, in Iran, which has combined Persian philosophy with uh, Islamic uh, Shiite philosophy. Actually, she he he is the one who. Uh, created a new Kekhosro, a new Persian mythology in post-Islam Iran. Influences. Apart from the influence of 19th century mode of fiction writing in the West, the book has taken a lot of inspirations from narrative versifications of Persian classics in which a labyrinthine mode of storytelling develops when a tale is told within another tale. Season 3 is the peak of such a style. So if you want to contact me as a translator and a kind of scholar of um, the House of Edrisis and Ghazal Alizadeh's work, these are my email addresses. And the one uh, which I check most often is my Gmail address, R-O-S-A-J-A-M-A-L-I at gmail.com. Thank you. All this has been provided by me, the translator and the scholar of Azale Alizadeh's work, Rosa Jamali. Thank you.